Dean Frost, uh, well in one leaders, Cheltenham one. What's your overriding emotion after the 95th minute equaliser? Uh, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm pleased with the performance. I'm proud of the way that the, that the lads have responded to, you know, like with the, the run that we've been on. They've, um, they've competed against uh, a side at the top, and then they're, they're a top for a reason, or near the, at the top of the, uh, the league for a reason. Um, yeah, we get, a, we get, a, we go ahead with. I think, just I think the guy, just, the uh, fourth, just put a, the ball up. Say there's four minutes left, we score. I think uh, everyone in the ground obviously thinks we've that's it, the three points, and um, uh, and and then they go up the other end and uh, just a minute ago get an equaliser. I'm, I'm I'm gutted for the players. I'm gutted, you know, for everyone at the club. But we have to take the positives. I've told all the lads there. So you've got to take the positives out of each performance, each indiv individual performance. Take the positives out of your um, performance as a team. And we've got to go again Tuesday. Um, it's just, it's a bit of a sucker punch that you you can see later. And, and get a draw, but you know we've scored at last, and we've hit the post, and we've had a few other chances. I think we look much brighter today, um, and I think um, Scott's made a big difference. He's a bright footballer, someone that adds a little bit of quality to the side. Um, yeah, I'm gutted, but at the other, other end, on the other side, I'm very proud of the players' performance, and um, yeah, let's, I can't wait for a Tuesday night. Is it hard to take because it, it came after the four minutes that the fourth official puts up? Uh, I, I didn't know that. Um, Maybe they add a little bit on for the way we celebrated. So we celebrated. If it was another moment in time, I would have said to them, I would have been having to go at the players for the way they celebrated. But that's just pure relief that we've scored and probably think we've, we've won the game. So I can't be critical. But I've, I've, over the years, I've been part of this club and we've celebrated like absolute lunatics. And, um, and it's, the opposition have equalised within a couple of minutes and we've gone a bit mad, um, uh, uh, like Daisy, myself and Ash at the players for going so, uh, for crazy. But you can't, that can't be helped today. I think that was purely a, re a relief, a release of energy, a, release, a relief of you know, just scoring a goal and looking like we're going to go and win. So, um, yeah, I think the extra bit of time probably come from the way we celebrated. It was an excellent finish from our goal by uh, Luke, wasn't it? Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's hit the post just I think, 10 minutes before. I think he hit the post as well. So he's done well. I think he's been bright. He's, he's made a, a two-step jump to the conference. And I think in every game, he's showed that he has something to offer. He's a threat. He's got a little bit of a swagger about him, which I like. Um, he's, he's good in the air. He works hard for the team. We, you know, something we have to keep on to him a little bit in terms of having good shape. But I think he's added something. And... Um, I think it, it, it can only improve. Um, you mentioned Scott Cashkett earlier. Tell us how that one came about. Obviously, you said after the Bromley uh, game in midweek that uh, you had mo no funds to bring anyone in. Uh, you've managed to get to get a forward in, and, and he looked really lively, didn't he? He did look lively. Um, he he was bright, um, bright number ten. As soon as the, the ball's in around their final third or their defending third, um, he he looks he comes alive, and he, I think. You can see, I mean, I, 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 he was coming on a recommendation for Leighton Orient. They said he'll, he'll, he'll buzz around, he'll rat around, he'll come alive in the box and he'll get you penalties. And you can sort of see how he can, he's just got that, he tows things away and just leaves a defender lunging at the last minute. So, yeah, I can see maybe him getting a few, you know, we don't have a, we haven't, I don't think we've, I think we've converted one penalty or had one penalty all season. So, um, yeah, he's bright and he draws a lot of, he draws fouls, he, you know, he's, um, and how it come about, I've, I've rung Andy Essentyler at uh, Leighton Orient and um, he said he was available for a certain amount of money. He, I had no money, so I, so I rang him up and said, oh, I've got no money to, to offer. Um, and the, the other option was him to go to a conference south side. Um, and he rang me back the following morning and said, you can have him for nothing. So again, I'm grateful to Leighton Orient for um, giving us Scott for, you know, was, you know we don't have to pay for him. Um, so today on that pitch, I think there's a high number of players that are playing, playing for nothing, you know, and so we're grateful. Talk of uh, players playing for nothing, Ibrahim, um, man of the match, was that a decision you agreed with? And, and again, his influence was there to see. He, he reminds me of a, a, a Daisy type, you know, Jamie Day type player. He just he sits in there, ties everything up, he's tidy. He's always in the right position when the opposition, when, we, when we're attacking the opposition uh, counter attacks He's in a good position to sort of help break up. Um, uh, play um, yeah helps uh, helps out defensively. Just a good decision maker, you know. 33 years of age, and you can see that he's come from a high level, and you can see it in his play. Um, yeah, he's playing nothing, um, you know. And you know, it, it, based on his free performances, it, it, I'd, I'd really like him around the club until the end of the season, and maybe going forward next year because I think it'd be an asset. You know, it's very clear the whole season there's not been 
a lot of older players, a lot of experience, and, and people, and I'm talking about experience that influence games. And you can see he influences these games, and he, 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 I think he ties the team together a little bit and gives us a little bit of stability. On the wider picture, how good a performance was that for 90 minutes? Because you've got to remember, you're playing the leaders and they didn't really cut you apart in, in many ways for, for, for long periods. There was a bit of spell pressure maybe midway through the second half that you had to withstand. But apart from that, it was a pretty decent performance. And maybe a lot of the focus will be about the fact that Cheltenham have got, you know, dropped a couple of points in it and it will be focused on Cheltenham. But how good was that from your team? Um, uh, it was probably the, uh, since I've been here, I think I had in fact the first game we had. We, I think we've done quite well on the day. We played, we played well in spells in other games. Can't I, I think? You know, we've done 30 minutes of spells, 45 minutes of spells, but we haven't sustained it for 90 minutes. Probably they said it's probably up there in the performance since we have come back to the club. Um, that is a it's been sustained for 90 minutes, and we've created chances. We've looked threatening. And likewise, let's be honest, Cheltenham at times broke on us and you know, they put some balls in the box and they've got two good forwards that are quite bright. Um, so we had to weather a little bit of a, a storm in, in, in spells. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good performance. And again, without getting carried away, um, we've we got to go again Tuesday. Um, but, you know, we, we've, had, we've had a lot of, say, negatives and we've had a lot of losses. I think it's time we start, you know, with that performance, look at the positives because we, we, we can just keep going on looking at our, our bad, or we haven't got results or we haven't played well in the full 90 minutes of the previous game. Um, we've got to look at the positives. And yeah, I think it was, a, it was a good all-round performance. I think everyone played their part, you know. Is it really frustrating then that, you know, they do score that goal and the wait for the win continues and goes yeah. on? Yeah, it, it, it does. Um, but that's, that's football, I've just said to... The squad in there, I think between them, they're going to all play, I don't know, maybe more than 3,000. I said, between you, you're all going to play, make, um, as a, a collectively, you're going to make thousands and thousands of appearances as players, and you're going to go ahead, you're going to go behind, and you're going to concede at last minute. Um, yeah, the, yeah, and he said, that's, that's a tough one to take, it's how you respond, and we've got to respond on Tuesday night. I was going to say, Tuesday night um, against Dover, uh, always a difficult place to go, but your thoughts ahead of that one? Yeah, it was. Um, just got to dust themselves down. They're, they're, a, they're, a, they're a good side. They've got lots of good players. Um, they play in a certain way. We've got to match them again. Like we've matched um, Cheltenham today. And um, yeah, take as many positives out of today and try and put them into choosing. You know, it's probably taking a lot of, lot of uh, energy out of people's legs in now. They, you know, it's like quite an end to end game, quite an open game, every pitch. But, you know, we've got uh, three days to recover now. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a tough game. They've got good players, um, plenty of goal scorers all around the pitch. And um, I think they're up, there, they're up there doing well for a reason. Uh, we'll run through the usual um, uh, injury ward and see who's, uh, who's fit and who's not. In terms uh, of your team selection today, just update us on uh, backup goalkeeper McIntaggart and also it, James it, Ferry. Right. Um, Mike um, turned his ankle yesterday in training, so he ran me this morning. Just he, he notified me last night and, and warned me that he could be uh, could be out for the day. And he's run me this, this morning. He said it's uh, it's not it's not not great to walk on, so can't walk on it. You can't play football. So he's um, he, I don't know how long he'll be out. Maybe a couple of weeks. Um, and James Ferry, um, Brentford a little bit hard about whether he was going to come back. So initially I was very keen to bring James back. I think it was nice to bring have a bit of continuity. Um, he has lots of energy. Um, you know, maybe some games he got lost in a little bit, but I still wanted him back. But in the end, when I when I got Scott on loan, and you know, you can only have five in your squad, um, uh, and, and and Brentford were sort of a bit de delaying their decision whether they wanted him to come back. Or else it made my decision very easy. And so, yeah, he may come back in the next few weeks. Who knows? But um, yeah, we're thankful again for Brentford and and for James for his eight games that he's um, I've played his part in. Chambers, Osborne, Corn. Porter, yeah, uh, Yusuf, the yeah, list Addy, on. Yeah, Addy Yusuf, he's back at D uh, Dagenham just getting treatment, so we'll find out. I think it was three to, uh, two to three weeks he'll be out. Corn, he's seen, uh, got a second opinion a day uh, from someone. We're hoping that if he responds to a different type of treatment, he may be back to, in three or four weeks. Um, uh, Harry Lee had a scan this morning, whether he needed it or not. He, 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 got, he had that just as a reassurance, but hopefully he may be back on Tuesday night. Michael Chambers uh, should be longer than a week. It's just a, a, a bad bruise in the hip. And uh, George Porter, hopefully two weeks. And um, yeah, hopefully gradually people come start coming back. Dean, thanks for your time and right. uh, well done on the point. Cheers.
Ibrahim Carbgo, um, man of the match, well in uh, holding leaders Cheltenham this afternoon. You must have enjoyed that. It was a really good game of playing, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a good game, and uh, I enjoy playing for Wellin. And it's, um, obviously it's a good squad, and uh, a couple of young, young players, young talents with a great ambition. So it's nice to be amongst them. So I enjoy playing with them anyway. Was that a particularly cruel dropping the two points with the, the late goal? Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's a good team we played against. Anyway, we are top of the game throughout the match. So it's really, I would say, bad losing two points here. But that's the game, you know. They were, the, I would say, the, the, almost the champion in the, in the conference. So it's a good game for, for Wellington today. How have you found the level of football compared to where you've played previously? What's, what's it been like playing for Wellington? Yeah, it's, uh, it's not a difficult task anyway, because I've been playing a lot of competition, the highest level, international. So for me, it's just uh, relax. I've been out for five months not playing. So it's not easy when you're not playing for five months and playing like this. So it's only hard work and focus and uh, discipline. So for me, it's not a big tax. Three games in a week, though, you feel it on the legs? Didn't you? I'm okay because I train every day anyway, so I'm okay. And the manager said if you're coming in, you're playing for nothing. Um, you must be enjoying it then if you're going to do, do it for nothing in, in the immediate term. Also, you, you, maybe you want to term, get something longer term at Welling for, you know, to stay no, for the now. It's uh, like, like I said in the beginning, I've been out for, for a couple of months, so for me, coming back in the game, it's the only thing important to me. For me, I've, I've made so much money in football, you know, so I've played the highest level. I've played in Arab country for me um, at my age now, even though I'm still strong. So at my age, it's just to play some games and just have fun. Yeah, I mean, everyone's seen what's happened in the past, in my view, but where'd you, how'd you end up at Welling? How, you know, why here? Uh, well, it's how to say it, you know, never say never in life, you know, because this is not where I was, uh, I was planning to, to be, but this is how to say you never change destiny. Destiny has to be the way it is because God decides our, 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 our future. We don't decide ourselves. So for me, I just believe in the Almighty God. Whatever He gives to me, I appreciate. I know there's better time to come in the future. And, and for now, you, you're just happy playing for well and, and seeing where it takes you? Yeah, I'm happy playing. Every day I'm in the field, that's the most important thing for me. That's the most happiest time for me because I love playing. Since I was a kid, I love playing football. So for me, football is part of me. I guess there can't have been many teams where you've been the experienced player and there literally is no one else at your sort of age in the side. You, you know, do they call your dad in the dressing room? <laughs> no, I know a couple of, uh, I would say, I've been in, I've been in England uh, many times. I know a couple of young players in England when uh, they are not here in Welling, but they call me, uh, I would say, big man because I've, I've seen them playing. And they are, like I said in the beginning, there's a lot of talent, young guys in the team. For me, I just come and play and go home. There's, uh, how to say it, I don't know most of them. This is my first time meeting them, so I just have to give them their respect and I deserve my respect as well and just play football and go home, that's all. Lovely. Ibrahim, thanks for your time and thanks. well done today. Thank you. Gary Johnson, uh, well in one, Cheltenham one. What's your overriding emotion at the end of that? Uh, the overriding emotion is one of disappointment because when your team doesn't play like you know it can then uh, and you don't win the game, then obviously it's disappointment. But at the same time, uh, you have to say that Welling put in a really good performance there as far as their, their energy, their, their passion. Their, uh, you know, they look like a team that's fighting and, and trying to get out of the trouble that they're in. And uh, if they play like that, they will. Because uh, at this level, uh, that sort of energy, team energy that they put in on the day uh, is going to get them close to winning and drawing football matches. So... Let's give them credit because uh, that was a fine performance by them, coinciding with a poor one by us. But sometimes you have to give the winning side, uh, well, winning the the other side credit. It's a cracking uh, finish by uh, Dan Holman to get. He had a few in. chances, didn't he? He had a few shots. We 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 thought we had a few shots uh, that we didn't really catch hold of. That was probably the only one he caught hold of. Actually, he had the other one that the goalkeeper made a good save. You hit the post at the other end, so. It was one. It was one of them end-to-end -end games. Actually, you, you know, normally you'd, you'd expect your team to be in the opposition half a bit longer, but uh, you know they, they they had some good athletes, some good runners, and uh, they looked like they, they were confident on the day, and uh, and they caused us some problems. So I'm just pleased to be coming away with a late equaliser. Uh, talk about late equaliser. It was obviously in the 95th minute. Uh, the full Fisher only put up four minutes. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, really? guess Welling got punished for celebrating their goal for so long. Well, they might have done. I don't know why the ref added on time, but I mean, it, it's happened against us many times. So, uh, you know, it's just one of those things.
how do you look at it in, in terms of the overall title race now? Do you look at it as another point towards the target that you're going for? Well, we haven't got to, our target is to win the league. So at this moment in time, with nine games to go, we've, uh, we've we're still there. We're in the driving seat, if you like. But uh, it's always going to be close. I said yesterday you know, on BT that it's. And uh, Aidy Panic said as well that it's, it's going to be twos and throws and ups and downs, and that's what happens. But uh, the games are being ticked off, and uh, we still we still got our noses in front. No problem. All right.